Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome here to the Launchpad, or maybe good afternoon or evening, depending where you're joining us from. You're looking at a simulated live view of LC4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, as we are now T minus 16 minutes and counting until SpaceX conducts their third launch attempt of today's SDA Tranche 0B launch. Today's mission will be the 61st mission for SpaceX overall and their 252nd single Falcon 9 mission. If it's your first time here though, welcome here at the launch pad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together and we're glad to have you all joining us here today. Let us know in the chat where you're watching from. We've got Peter watching in the UK. Salmon Vey is in India. Hello, good to see you. Noah is in Minnesota in Eden Prairie. We've got Anthony is in France. Mark's in New Jersey. We've got Jerome also in France. Christopher's in Boston. We got Sky in Mississippi. Great to have you here. Smile is in India. We've got Andrew in middle of Tennessee, just outside Nashville. Ris Risto is in Finland. Rabbi is in Benegal. We've got Mfeta, Mfeta, I think that is. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. In California, Orlando's in Chile, Rockets in England, Stevens in Mississippi. Great to have you all joining us here as we are now under 15 minutes and counting until launch for today's mission. As always, if you want to know more about today's mission, you can head over to tlpnetwork.com, click on launches, and you can see all of your upcoming launch uh, schedule there, as well as your detailed mission briefings. Today's Falcon 9 booster is booster 1063-13, meaning it's going for its 13th flight. Its maiden flight occurred on November 21st, 2020, carrying Sentinel-6 from this very same pad. It has conducted f uh, 12 other missions. Many of them are Starlink, but notable missions were on November 23rd, 2021, it launched the double asteroid redirection test for DART. It launched Transporter 7 in April of this year. Iridium-9 and some OneWeb satellites in May, and its last flight was 56 days ago on July 7th, carrying some more Starlinks to orbit from this same pad as well. It has conducted all of its missions except one from this pad. It did launch once from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, but you can find out more about that. Today's payload is the second mission for the Space Development Agency, carrying some of the satellites required for the Tranche Zero transport layer. This is a classified mission, so we will We'll not get to see uh, the data of separation. Uh, bear with me a moment while we see why that clock has switched to scrub. I'm not entirely sure why that has happened. Uh, as SpaceX did just begin their live broadcast, and we don't have anything initially saying a scrub at this point. So bear with me just one moment as we verify that information. But we are continuing to count down about 13 minutes and counting. There we go. It's reset there. 13 minutes and counting until launch. As always, if you guys have questions, you can send those to us in the chat by taking us at the launch pad. And we'll work on answering those live to the best of our ability throughout today's live broadcast. Of course, we'll be listening into SpaceX Mission Control. Steven, thank you so much for becoming a solar explorer. Appreciate your support there. If you were a member of TLP in one of our th third, fourth, or fifth levels uh, here on YouTube, or if you've be considered becoming a TLP member, we did want to just make a quick note. We upgraded and updated our uh, membership program here on the Launchpad YouTube channel on our brand new second channel, the Launchpad News. You now have news membership options. And over on Patreon, that's where you can uh, get kind of a TLP network wide option uh, with merch discounts, free merch, and different things like that, including member meetup invites. So definitely take some time, check that out if you'd like to help us and support our mission of informing and inspiring the explorers of tomorrow because space is better together. Check those out on both the Launchpad and the Launchpad news channels. We do still have that very first level, 99 cents, gets you the helmet next to your name and gets your name in green because we know many people like having that. So you can do those on YouTube and then head over to Patreon to upgrade your membership to something even more uh, with some more benefits for you. But uh, that's never required, but it is extremely appreciated as that helps us dream and plan and expand our equipment and our team as we continue uh, around the world to bring you the best possible coverage of everything space.
As you can see, SpaceX is getting ready to go live here. 11 minutes, 30 seconds and counting until Falcon 9 launches from Slick 4E at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. We're going to listen in to Mission Control, but you can continue to send your questions in the chat by taking us at the launch pad, and we'll continue to answer those. Uh, but due to uh, the mission being classified, we will not have video or telemetry for payload deployment, but we'll be watching as this booster flies for the 13th time and comes home. SpaceX will, I'm sure, explain more once they get underway. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the stream, invite people to join us, and join the TLP Discord, because that's where our community hangs out in between launches. Let's listen in to SpaceX Mission Control, T-10 minutes, 50 seconds, and counting. Hello, everyone, and happy Saturday. On your screen right now is a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket as it waits for its 7.25 a.m. Pacific time launch from Slick 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Today's launch marks SpaceX's 260th launch overall and our 61st launch of the year. My name is Zachary Lupin and I'm an avionics reliability engineer here at SpaceX joining you from our headquarters about 150 miles southeast of the launch site. In just under 11 minutes from now, we'll be sending the Space Development Agency's second Tranche Zero mission to low Earth orbit. For those of you following along, you'll know we stood down from our last two launch attempts. During standard pre-launch checkouts on Thursday morning, one of the first stage engines was not responding as expected. The team worked through that issue during the countdown, but ultimately decided to stand down for the day to take a closer look. Similarly, during yesterday's launch attempt, a valve on the ground support equipment was behaving out of family. After completing checkouts yesterday and verifying the vehicle and ground support equipment is healthy, we're back into the count and not tracking any blockers to launch at this point. As mentioned, today's mission is for our customer SDA in support of their overall constellation called the Proliferated Warfighter Space Architecture, or PWSA for short. Along with delivering the SDA's 11 payloads to orbit, SpaceX also designed designed and built two of the mission payloads that will serve as part of the PWSA's tracking layer, which will provide global indications, warning, tracking, and targeting of advanced missile threats, including hypersonic missile systems. The SDA prioritizes speed by leveraging commercial advances and delivering capabilities on two-year time, including hypersonic missile systems. The SDA prioritizes speed by leveraging commercial advances and delivering capabilities on two-year timelines with the goal of quickly delivering space-based capabilities to support terrestrial missions through development, fielding, and operation of the PWSA. The payloads on board will allow combatant commands to start to develop their exercise and operational plans around access to data that they can expect to receive from future tranches of their constellation. At just around the T-9 minute mark, the range is ready to support and weather is currently 90% favorable for launch. The vehicle and payload are in good health and tracking towards a T-0 of 7.25 a.m. Pacific time. Now, it's also worth mentioning, at the request of our customer, we will not be sharing any views from the second stage today and will therefore end the webcast at around the T-8 minute mark just after Falcon 9 touches back down onto land. Located at the very top of Falcon 9 on your screen, we have the payload fairing, and it measures about 40 feet in length and 17 feet in diameter. Now to put that size into perspective, an average fire truck is about 40 feet long and 12 feet wide, so a fire truck would fit comfortably inside our payload fairing. Now while on Earth, the fairing's primary job is to protect the payload from contamination, and then at liftoff and through ascent, the fairing will also shield against aerothermal loads and heating. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing, and the second stage will continue on its journey to orbit, carrying the payload. The fairing half supporting today's mission are both flight-proven, with one half flying for its fifth time and the other flying for its eighth. Below the payload fairing is the second stage, which is responsible for propelling the payload to its drop-off orbit in space. Now, not only does SpaceX's second stage look similar to the first stage, which is the larger stage below, it also has the same diameter, uses the same metal in the tanks, same computers, same propellant, and nearly the same engine. And this allows us to use similar tooling, design, and systems, which results in greater efficiency and reliability. The first and second stages are connected by the black inner stage, which houses the pneumatic pushers that allow stage separation during flight. The inner stage also houses the second stage engine, called the Merlin Vacuum Engine, or MVAC engine. Moving down the rocket, the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage and is the primary part of the rocket that gets reused multiple times. At the very bottom of the first stage are nine Merlin M1D engines that accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere and help it land back on Earth following stage separation. 
The first stage supporting today's mission is flying for its 13th time today and will be attempting to recover the booster back on land at landing zone 4 at Vandenberg. And if successful, this will mark our 222nd overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and heavy first stage landings. If you're not too familiar with what getting to orbit actually means, in order to get the rocket and our payload into orbit, the rocket has to not only go up really fast, it also has to go sideways. As we ascend, we tilt the engines, the technical term for that being gimbling, and that turns the rocket horizontally. We're still going up, but now we are also heading horizontally away from the launch pad, and this is what we call a gravity turn. The rocket typically needs to go 17,500 miles per hour horizontally in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and get into orbit. And to help demonstrate this concept, imagine firing a cannon from a really high mountain. The cannonball will arc, and then gravity will pull it down to Earth. As you increase the power, the cannonball will arc and land farther and farther away. Eventually, if you could continue to increase the power, the cannonball will be going so fast that it ends up in freefall around the Earth. Gravity is still pulling down on the cannonball, but it's going so fast it never actually hits the ground. And this arc, which constantly misses the Earth, is called an orbit. So when we get to liftoff today, watch the orientation of Falcon 9. You'll see we go straight up until about the T plus 10 second mark, at which point we begin that shift in orientation so that Falcon 9 can go sideways really fast. Be sure to keep an eye out for this in just a few minutes. So far we're at T minus 5 minutes and 28 seconds and counting, and all systems are go for an on-time liftoff. The range is currently green and weather is 90% favorable. Vehicle and payload continue to be healthy. However, if for some reason we're not able to launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Coming up next, the truss structure next to the vehicle, known as the transporter erector, or TE, will start to retract. The transporter erector is used for rollout and to route propellants and electrical power to the vehicle in preparation for launch. And in preparation for retraction, the TE clamps will open. Those clamps are located just below the payload fairing. The transporter erector will then pull away from the rocket slightly, and then at T0, hydraulics pull the transporter erector even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off and we should see those clamp arms beginning to open just below the payload fairing in about 10 seconds from now. And there you can see those clamp arms opening just below the payload fairing. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen, or LOX. You may have also noticed the white clouds around the outside of the vehicle, and those clouds are completely normal. During propellant loading, we vent cold gas that forms above the LOX tank surface, and what you're seeing is the result of that cold gas coming into contact with the warmer California air and condensing. You should now be able to see the transporter erector beginning to retract away from the Falcon 9 rocket. Both first stage and second stage should finish loading propellant about a minute apart from each other. The first stage finishes up at the T minus 3 minute mark, and the second stage at T minus 2 minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup, and this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside of T minus two seconds, we light the Merlin 1D engines, and then we're set for liftoff. Stage one lock flow is complete. Pogo. And there, there you heard that call out that stage one lock loading is complete. The SDA Tranche Zero payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is currently tracking no issues on the rocket, so let's continue to listen in to the terminal count. In just a few moments, we should hear that call out that stage two locks loading is complete on the vehicle.
stage two locks load complete. And there's that call out that stage two locks loading is complete. Coming up at the T minus one minute mark, Falcon 9 will be in startup, and this means that the vehicle's flight computers have taken over in preparation for launch. Vehicle gas close ups. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out that Falcon 9 is in startup. Next will be the final go given by the launch director. LD is go for launch. At T minus 40 seconds, all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 and the Space Development Agency's second tranche zero mission. So let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 heads into space. 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. T minus ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Engines full power. And the Space Development Agency is zero P. Go Falcon. Go FTA. Stage one propulsion is normal. Equals pitching downrange. We're now T plus 40 seconds into the Space Development Agency's second tranche zero mission. Stage Power and telemetry nominal. Falcon 9 has throttled down to prepare for max Q, which should occur within the next 30 seconds or so. And max Q is the point at which the vehicle experiences the greatest yeah, amount of aerodynamic, aerodynamic pressure as it ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Max Q. And there's that call out for Max Q, and everything is looking good with the rocket's trajectory so far. Now we have five events coming up in rather quick succession, and these are Miko, Stage Separation, Stage 1 Flip, SES-1, and then the Boost Back Burn. Miko, also known as Main Engine Cutoff, is when we shut down all nine Merlin 1D yeah, engines on the first stage. Stage separation is when the first and second stages separate from one another, and this is followed by stage, uh, stage separation when the, fir uh, when the first stage will flip over and conduct a boost back burn to fly back towards land. SES-1, or second engine start one, is when we ignite the single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Now, as a reminder, we won't be showing any views of our second stage today at the request of our customer. We should be seeing Miko in just about 15 seconds from now. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And MVEC startup. Stage one boost back startup. And there you heard and maybe even saw those events that happened back to back, including Miko, or main en engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, SES one, and second engine start one, and the start of our boost back burn. At the moment, the boost back burn is in progress and will last for another 15 seconds or so. And while that burn is in progress, we are expecting to hear the call out for fairing separation. And as a reminder, at the request of our customer, we won't be broadcasting fairing separation, but we should still have audio confirmation of it. Fairing separation confirmed. 
and there's that callout confirming fairing separation. Coming up in just a few moments, we should have the completion of the boost back burn on the first stage. Stage one, boost back shutdown. And with the boost back burn done, our first stage is now headed back to Earth and will be attempting its land landing in just a few minutes. One of the nice things about land landings is we're not subject to ocean weather, and it's pretty convenient to land the first stage right next to where it lifted off. However, our ability to execute a land landing is really dependent upon the customer's Both needs. vehicles are following a normal trajectory. Their mission trajectory and performance needed by the satellite determines if we can return to land. In order to complete today's land landing, the first stage has two more burns left. Next up is the entry burn, which will help to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. If you're just joining us, we just had successful liftoff of Falcon 9 and the Space Development Agency's second Tranche Zero mission. As the mission name suggests, today's customer is the SDA, or Space Development Agency. After an on-time liftoff, we had successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, second engine start one, boost back burn, and fairing separation from the second stage. We're now coming up on the second burn on our first stage today, the entry burn, which should start in just over a minute from now. You're currently seeing live views of our Falcon 9 first stage as it descends back to Earth. And from time to time, some of these views may show the hypersonic grid fins. Not currently on your screen. These hypersonic grid fins help steer the vehicle during descent as we re-enter Earth's atmosphere. Signal, Baja, Mexico. And there you can now see those grid fins. Coming up in just a few moments, we should have the Stage 1 Entry Burn Startup. Both stages continue to follow a normal trajectory. Stage 1 Entry Burn Startup. And there's that call out for the Stage 1 Entry Burn Startup, where we light uh, engines at the bottom of the Falcon 9 first stage as it descends back to Earth. And this burn will ju last just a few moments. Stage 1 Entry Burn Shutdown. And stage 1 FTS has saved. And there's that confirmation of Stage 1 Entry Burn Shutdown. As a reminder, we'll be ending our webcast after Falcon 9 lands, and we won't be sharing any views from our second stage at the request of our customer. Coming up in about, uh, in just a few moments from now, we should have the landing burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. Stage 1 transonic. Stage 1 landing burn. And there's that confirmation of landing burn start. This burn should last just around 15 seconds or so. Stage 1 landing leg deploy. Stage 1 landing confirmed. And there you have confirmation of landing of our Falcon 9 vehicle. This was the 13th launch and landing of this booster and our 222nd overall successful recovery of an orbital class rocket, including both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy first stage landings. As we mentioned earlier, at the request of our customer, we are concluding our webcast coverage early today. We want to thank the space...
We want to thank the Space Development Agency for entrusting us with today's launch and a special thanks to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing support. With today's launch, this marks SpaceX's 61st launch of this of 2023, m matching last year's annual record with still four months to go before the end of this year. Congrats to the SpaceX and Falcon teams for this record-breaking year. And if you're looking for some added excitement this weekend, please tune in for our next Starlink launch set to lift off from pad 39A in Florida at 7.50 p.m. Eastern Sunday evening. The SpaceX and NASA teams are also looking to bring home the Crew-6 astronauts after a six-month stay at the International Space Station, just as soon as weather is favorable. We'll bring you live coverage of their departure from the orbiting laboratory, as well as their return to Earth when they splash down off the coast of Florida. And as always, our team is making progress with Starship down in Texas, getting ready for our second flight test of a fully integrated Starship. Be sure to keep an eye on x.com slash SpaceX for updates. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon. And there we go, another Falcon 9 back on the ground, having completed its 13th flight. That is going to do it for us here today. If you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that subscribe button so you never miss another live launch coverage. And also head on over to our second channel, the Launchpad News, and subscribe there so you never miss our space news updates or exclusive interviews. We did just drop an interview uh, and engine tour here on the Launchpad channel with Space Engine Systems. So if you haven't yet, take a moment, check that out. Uh, pretty much world exclusive, getting to go in and see their brand new hypersonic turbo ramjet engine uh, that will be used on their future space planes beginning testing next year. But from TLP Canada Studio, my name is Zach, and we'll see you next time, because space is better together.